Hi, my name is Michael, also known as Cord Cutter. Some time ago I posted an instructional video called How to Build a TV Antenna Fractal Bowtie Tutorial. If you haven't seen it yet, I recommend that you check out my channel and go watch it first. It's a very short video, actually less than three minutes. Now in this video I'm going to share some information that will help you custom build a TV antenna that will be tailor made for the stations in your area no matter what city you live in in the US. I'll share with you a couple websites that are packed with information and I'll also share with you a formula that will help you custom build a TV antenna. Then I'll do a demonstration of the antenna at work. If you're thinking about cutting the cord and switching to an antenna or you already have, congratulations! Using a TV antenna is a great way to save a lot of money every year and was one of the best decisions that I ever made. Now to find what stations are near you, a great website to visit is antennaweb.org. I won't be showing any screenshots of these web pages due to copyright restrictions, but when you go there, you can type in your address and it will tell you what stations are available in your area. It will also process a Google map showing you exactly where the transmit towers are and their distance from your house. This map comes in handy to help you determine which direction to point your antenna. It also calculates low-lying areas and infrastructure as well. Another great website to visit is the FCC TV Quarry. I have these links in my channel description and you can copy and paste them into your browser. Once you're there, enter the call letters of the station, scroll down and click results for this page. Here there's a ton of information such as transmit frequency, transmit power, antenna height, polarization and the polar plot but the most important thing here is the frequency. The frequency is going to determine the size of your antenna element. But first, let me share with you an example of my scenario. At the bottom of this slide is my house. And at the top are the three stations that I get from my small antenna in my attic. These three stations give me all the major networks that I need. They are all in the UHF range which is RF channels 14 and above. And each one transmits at a pretty good rate of power, WXXV being the weakest at 300 kilowatts. First of all, TV signals can be received at full wavelength, half wavelength, one quarter wavelength, and so on, but most effectively received at half wavelength. So for UHF, if we measure and cut our elements at full wavelength size and bend them in half, we'll get that half wavelength reception. But for VHF, which is RF channels 13 and below, since the wavelength is so large, we'll cut that measurement in half and receive those signals at one quarter wavelength. So now, let's take a look at WXVO on the bottom right. I don't get this channel at all. It's twice as close to my house than the other stations that I do get. So what gives? Well, WXVO is a low-powered station transmitting at only 3 kilowatts. It's also in the VHF range, which transmits in a lower frequency and a much larger wavelength. I never worried much about getting this channel because it doesn't show any programming that I'm particularly interested in. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to customize an antenna that will hopefully bring this channel in. First, I'll need to determine the frequency wavelength with this formula. 300 divided by the frequency equals wavelengths in meters. And since I'm using standard measurements such as inches, then wavelengths in meters times 39.3701 equals the wavelength in inches. Now WXVO transmits between 210 and 216 megahertz. I'm going to use the low number and I'll say 300 divided by 210 equals the wavelength of 1.42857143 meters and then I'll take that same number and multiply it by 39.3701 to equal 56.243 inches and then I'll round it up to the next quarter inch 
at 56 and a quarter. Then I'll cut that in half to 28 and an eighth of an inch. All right, well, I got it all put together. And what I had to do was uh, the elements are a little bit further apart from each other to make room for those wide whiskers. And so now I'm going to take this up and, uh, well, first I'm going to hook it up in my dining room and run a channel scan to see if it will detect uh, that channel 7 WXVO and then I'm going to put it up in my attic in the same spot where the existing antenna is and run a real test on it. Alright, well, I ran my channel scan with my antenna on my makeshift antenna stand and let me show you what I have here. Uh, my I have my cable running down the wall and then it just comes out and runs to my television in the back. So let's take a look and at the channels that I have here and I've got WXXV and WXVO is not there. Let's take a look at the other channels that I normally get. WLOX WMAH and then back to WXXV Alright, here's the old one there and yeah, we're going to take that one down we're going to put that one up Okay, we got it all hooked up there. Let's uh, let's go down and see what it looks like. Okay, well I made it back down. Let's uh, take a look at our channels and see what's, what's going on with it. Here's uh, WXXV. And that's the signal we got. And we have something. It looks like it was a success. Okay, let's see what uh, WLOX. WMAH. Back to WXXV. In this demonstration, focusing on one frequency helped me bring in the one channel in question. I expected to lose a little bit on the UHF side, which did happen. But if the difference was greater, I could combine the two sizes like this one, with the smaller elements in the center. I hope this video was helpful. Feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.